When I first saw this BMW, it looked a right old mess. Both of these quarter panels have been kicked in by vandals and our car owner really wanted this repairing, so he shopped around for a repairer, but with no joy. The possibility of this also becoming an insurance write-off, which he really didn't want, he contacted me. I agreed to the job and I'm going to show you guys how I fix this BMW from start to finish with the paintless dent removal methods. So grab a brew and enjoy! This is the first dent of two that I've got to repair. Okay, so I've marked it up already just so you can see how bad it is. We've got a few body lines here in the yellow. These have been bent in various places. Oh, I've just noticed another dent there. <laughs> um, the areas in purple, those are all the different dented areas. There's a tight dent here, okay, and the gap has also been pulled out away from the door because the panel has been pushed in, it's just opened it up. But once the panel comes out, uh, that gap's gonna uh, tighten up. Right, on to the next one. And this quarter panel doesn't look any better. Multiple dents, again, pretty much the full quarter panel, this area here is just blasted to bits, okay? We've got the added difficulty of the filler cap. But I'm gonna take the housing out and just see if I can get my fingers uh, behind there, because that'll help me get to these sharp dents here. Okay, these are deep dents. The body line has also been affected uh, on the arch. Just makes things a little bit more harder to do. Okay. To access the damage, I'm gonna be stripping the interior trims out. I'm gonna take the filler housing out, like I said. Arch liners, I'm just gonna take these out, just see if there's any grommets inside that'll help me. There might be, there might not be, but with it being a BMW, there should be. The rear lamp's gonna take those out, so I can get my arm in, okay and I need a lot of luck. First to come out is the boot carpet and then the driver's side compartment door unclips. The rear panel trim then needs unscrewing, just two caps, two posi screws and four plastic clips. Lift this up and out of the way. Next I need to get right inside and remove the anchor mounts with a torque socket. A few more clips and then the trim pulls out of the car. As you can see, I now have superb access behind this panel, but also I have to be very careful of this exposed battery. The other side is very similar, a few clips, an anchor mount and a movable compartment and this side comes out. That took around 10 minutes to strip both sides and it's exposed the majority of the damaged panels giving me great access if I need it later on. Whilst I'm in there, I'm removing both lamps. Each lamp is held in with three 8mm nuts. I'm after maximum access points, and these voids are great leverage points as well. On to my absolute favourite part of any winter strip down, and it's the wheel arch liners. Look at that face. BMW made these out of a fabric material, which holds all the water and the mud, and it gets everywhere. So after all this, I need to get the vacuum cleaner out and tidy up my floor. It pays off though, because I found another factory access point, a bung. I'm nearly done with the strip down now. The, uh, the inside trim, the light and this filler cap have come off. It's only all done with a little clip, uh, nice and easy to, to uh, take it off. This plastic housing, however, is a bit of a pain. So the, um, the, the filler neck, I've had to disconnect that or, or un unclip it anyway. So I can pull it down and then I'm just trying to carefully wiggle this out. But because the panel is bent inwards, it's uh, not really giving me any slack. So I'm gonna have to uh, cold glue pull this area just to lift it out a bit, maybe you know about half an inch or something. And that should give me enough uh, to wiggle the housing out. And then I can uh, decide which quarter panel to fix first. Very sticky stuff this, not very good when you're wearing latex gloves. Pop it on the slide hammer, just under this 
wiggly thing here. Okay. Give it a little warm up as well. Oh, that's a bit better. Okay, that should do. Should just go around the full quarter panel with that. I'll be done in half an hour, won't I? Okay, that took some taking out. So how's it held in? We've got four clips here. Okay, either, either side. Sorry, two at the top, two at the bottom. Okay, warm this up with a heat gun, then you can get something in flat like a spreader and push them down. Okay, I didn't realise that there was this big uh, rubber neck at the back and that's what was holding it in along with the panel. And uh, yeah, there you go, that is it. That is all the stripping fit completed. Now I need to decide which side I start first. So one easy way to, uh, to sort this out, we've got side A and we've also got side B. Right, let's have a coin toss. We've got A for heads, and B for tails. Ready? It's a B. So how am I gonna start this big dent? Okay, so I need to obviously pull the damage out and, and reduce this door gap. So there's a few ways that I can try and fix this. And also uh, there's quite a few tools that I can use. So let's have a look here. So these are all uh, lateral tension tools. So we've got some lateral tension bars here, there as well, um, a smaller one there. We've got some like tabs with hooks on the end and we've also got straps. Everything works with hot glue. So we'll pop a lot of hot glue on there, stick it onto the panel, onto the quarter panel, not the door. And then we'll get a ratchet strap that will go to a pillar and we can ratchet it. This will pull on the panel and obviously stretch it and the dent might pop out, but it will definitely reduce the gap there. I'm not going to use the strap this time because I want to be able to repair it with the door shut. So if the door is shut, there's another tool that you can use and that is this lateral tension tool. So basically you stick one tab onto the quarter panel, one onto the door, and then you, you tighten this, which pulls the two tabs together, which again nips that um, door gap and reduces it. And hopefully, again, pops the dents out. I like it if the dents do pop out. Um, and then we've got the bars as well. So the lateral, te lateral tension bar, okay. This is um, a bit bigger than that one, obviously. We can use tabs as well, various, various shapes. Okay, so one goes, say one goes there, and the other one goes there. Attach the bar to the tabs, and then again, twist that, and it'll stretch the panel, then it pops out. And then lastly, we've got the tabs, the eye bars. This is basically the same as the strap, so we bond it, to the panel like that, like the strap, put it onto um, a ratchet strap, tighten it up, and it pulls the damage. I have done a, a repair with these just recently, and uh, the dent came out really well. But thinking about it, what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna use any of those tools just yet. I'm gonna get the cold glue out, stick it into the center, but warm the edges up with a heat gun and give it a few light tugs in the center because I'm sure I can massively reduce this damage in only a couple of pulls. Where shall I put it? Top or bottom? And try the top.
Oh, look at that. The door gap's uh, reduced. Marvellous. That has come out surprisingly well. So I'm just going to um, have a look at this area now, just warm these two bits up on the body lines because those are the areas where it's likely to crack, the paint's likely to crack. So I'm going to warm this area up, put a couple of glue tabs on there, see how it goes. Uh, I have taken the bung out and I can, get, um, I can get the hula hoop through the bung and I can get right onto the back of these uh, dents as well. So spend a bit of time on this area and then I'm going to tap the crowns down. Pop a crease tab on there. The tab that, uh, that fits the dent the best. So as it's a slight crease dent, I'm just gonna use this creasy tab. Um, we'll go for the slide hammer as well. a little bit of uh, pulled a little bit pulled a little bit of it out go with another crease tab this time the last tab pulled a bit up but I need to go bigger and also I need a more controlled pull so I'll be swapping from a slide hammer to a lifter throughout the repair when glue pulling I'll be alternating between the lifting tools I just need to adjust the lifter and engage it onto the tab and then I can pull the glue tab and the dent up. Go one more. When applying the glue, you only need a bead. There's no need to overdo it. And as before, the lifter needs slightly adjusting to take up the slack on the spring and then I can give this tab a good controlled pull. So it's reduced it a little bit. Um, I'm just going to give it a warm up and get the bar on behind there. The reason for starting this area with the glue tab is to lift up the bulk or lift up the easy metal. Once it starts to get difficult, I need to put more effort into moving the area and I need a PDR bar behind this. To help me do this, I also need to address any areas holding tension. This is done by using a hammer and knockdown to beat down the high areas, highlighted by the tight lines from the reflection of my light board. After a few pulls with the glue and uh, getting the bar behind there, I do still think there's a lot of pressure in the centre of that damage. So I'm going to use two um, tabs like that. These have got cutouts so you can uh, get to, this, get to the, the dent a bit better. So pop them there, about that, about that far apart. And then I'm gonna use a small lateral tension device, like that, okay? And what I can do now is I can tighten this up, spread the tabs apart, and take the pressure and the tension from the center of this damage, and it'll help me repair the dent. The tabs I have here, have different shaped surfaces but I need a flat one so these Metal Medic Halo tabs are the ideal choice for what I'm about to do. These need plenty of glue unlike the tabs I used earlier, smother these in glue but don't forget to wear gloves because this stuff is molten hot. The glue is Camoto Collision Glue or Kiko Flex, it's the same glue just in different packaging. And then I need the LTS to be slightly off centre, so I'm using some offset CNC machine blocks to the Metal Medic push pull bar setup. And then aligning the LTS to each end of the tabs and using the spring loaded button to adjust the LTS. Lastly, taking up the slack on a threaded bar by winding the adjustment wheel clockwise until I can feel a light bit of resistance, and then I'm ready to go. By winding this out, it's just going to pull that metal apart, like I say. I'm just going to hold on to that there. Okay, that's enough. 
my light in there so I can see. That's moving a lot easier now. A lot better, sorry. Get some, get some heat in there. If you focus between the two tabs, you should see the dent lifting up. Those tabs are spread in the area so the middle has no tension. Excellent. I need to lift up a larger area, so I swap to the glue again for a few more pulls. I mentioned before that I fitted offset blocks to the LTS system. This is so the threaded bar is to the side of the damage, freeing up the area of repair. Once I'm happy the dent has been levelled up, I can then remove the blocks with isopropyl and a plastic wedge. A lot of glue on there, very hot as well. I'm going to go down a bit lower down. Am I going to do it with one glue stick? Ooh. Just showing off now, aren't I? Fill in any gaps with the glue. A little bit on top there, a bit on the bottom. Marvellous. Just let that set for a, a minute or so. Get my uh, get my board into position. So what I'm going to do with this one is uh, again warm up the centre, um, get the bar in there, just give it a few little tweaks, see what happens, and uh, put some glue tabs on there as well. Give it a yank with a slide hammer. glue on there I've had this tab for for years look at that stretched not broken yet don't intend to break it either This dent is coming out pretty well. I'm just working above the body line. Okay, I'll take this off and uh, let's have a look at this bottom one and see how much it's come out. Now, I know all this looks a bit confusing and I agree, it's all a bit picky and messy but the actual dent is up and it's just a case of repeating the process of tapping down highs and lifting out the lows which does take a bit of time to do but at the same time it can be very satisfying. Once I've gone over a certain area I'll knock the high spots down with a suitable knockdown and hammer to keep it as level as possible. Once it's at that point I can get rid of the glue tabs and blend the outer areas to match.
All right then, this is looking spot on. This area is looking spot on. Uh, considering these were quite tight dents, it looks very nice. It took me about two hours to get to this point, uh, running through all the different uh, tips. I was using uh, a soft cap, but with lots of tape on the end to kind of soften the blow and move a lot of metal quickly. Then I was going onto the soft cap, going onto uh, a steel um, a steel tip with a tiny bit of tesla tape on there that just stops or prevents me from cracking the paint when I put a bit of pressure on there and then finally I was just using the bar with no tip just using the edge um, and that is you know you've got to go really careful with that because if you do slip uh, there is a good chance you will crack the paint but let's have a look at the uh, repair so far if I can there we go So where was that sharp dent? The sharp dent was around here. There. Then come straight down. There's that horrible dent around here, which you're taking that bottom body line in. So I'm not gonna go too far. I'm not gonna go any further with this dent. I need to have a look at this one. Um, and a few of the crowns as well because I can bet you that when I start tapping these crowns down this top area is going to move as well so I, I then need to go back in and finish it off so um, yeah that one and then the crowns okay the tool that I'm going to be using for this one is um, a long double bend screw tip bar I'll just try and get in the shot there you go and also I'm using a kind of a mushroom tip, if focus, maybe, there you go. This will move quite a lot of metal quite quick without making any kind of push marks in there. And then what I'm gonna do is, I'll just swing this round. So there's the dense look. I'm gonna pop it in through there like that. Okay, and start pushing from the inside. This dent should be a lot easier to repair. It's only slightly kissed the top of the body line and the center isn't too sharp. The tip on the bar has a rubber coating so it reduces the chances of any over pushes and it's also less likely to slip on the rear side as the rubber grips the panel. I'm working around the dent slowly, lifting up the shoulders until I reach the middle. The bottom part is simple enough to sort, a little bit of knockdown work to level up the area and then a few pushes with the bar is all that's needed. Once both areas are levelled up, I can then go about blending the area, taking out all those fine ripples and imperfections. And here you can see that the middle part is looking miles better now. All the dents are up and it's totally workable, but next I need to work a few of the crowned areas to free up some of that locked in tension. After all this tapping down, a few low areas need lifting up so I'm going to go back in there with my long double bend screw tip bar, but I'm swapping a mushroom screw tip for my tether tape wrap tip. And if you watch the centre of the screen you'll see this dent slowly disappear. To finish off the rear end of this panel, there's just one more crown to fix. Using my leather tip knockdown and a hammer, this crease will be laid flat in no time at all. 
I also have super access from the inside if I need to make any small tweaks with a bar. That is all the crowns knocked down. There's just a few more areas that I'm going to have to pull up with the glue. I've tried to get a bar inside, but it's just not going to work because it's bonded from the inside. So let's have a look. There you go. A little dent there, dent there, and kind of this crease here. And it just goes a little bit wiggly up there. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do now. But um, I have... The paintwork doesn't look original to me, so I'm going to give it a quick check with the paint depth gauge. Um, just a few uh, telltale signs that I need to go steady uh, because I'm using hot glue and there's always a chance that the paint might come off. So I'm just going to check it with the uh, paint depth gauge and then get cracking. Not get cracking, but get started. No, get going. <laughs> I'll go up there, just have a look. Marvellous, right, okay, good to go with the glue pulling. The reason why I thought the panel had been repainted was because the glue tabs were leaving an outline in the lacquer. This is usually an indication that the lacquer is soft or has been repainted in the past. Better to be safe than sorry though, and that's why I used a paint depth gauge. The readings gave me confidence that the paint is factory, so I can carry on gluing. Time wise, I'm over half a day into this repair now and there's so many areas, mostly small, that need to be tweaked. Choosing similar shaped tabs to the shape of the dent so it lifts up the right amount of metal. It is quite tough around the bottom area where the sealer is because that's stopping the panel from moving but it will come out eventually. This feels a bit deja vu, but the vertical crease has reappeared. After all that work lower down, but it's not a problem though because this is easily repairable. Again, watch the centre of the screen and see the dark line gradually reduce. This is the dent coming out. I'm nearly there on this repair. I'm onto the last main part now, which is this bit here. So we've got a couple of smaller dents, and then we've got the main dent here, and also a bit of a crown which is left there. Um, and then a couple of smaller dents here. This is all glue pull stuff. Um, and then to finish it off, we've got that one up there, and then blend this middle part. But yeah, it's looking really good so far. And this is just the warm up dent. Got the big one to do next. Put some more glue on to this crease tab. Pop it right on the edge. Just get a bigger one for that bit there. It's pretty, isn't it? A few more seconds to uh, go off. You can hear that. It's, the reason why it's doing that it noise is there's still a lot of um, tension pressure in this crown at the top. It's just not letting it come out all the way. I'm going to give it a good smack down on this crown. Uh, good news is as well, because there's a bung straight behind there, I can get to the back of it. So I'm just going to give it a few, uh, a few big clumps. It's 
So I've got another screw tip bar, uh, again with a soft cap, straight in through that, um, that grommet, that hole, and gets onto the back of that damage. the area down as well. Just take up the slack on this mini lifter. Marvellous, works that time. Because I tap this area down, I can now pull this area up. in the uh, link in the description below. I don't come a coffee in though. Ah, it's a shameless plug, but yes, your brew will taste better in a dent remover mug. But back onto the repair, and I'm smoothing out the very small imperfections with precise knockdowns. Finishing off with a sharp polished knockdown, which is highly effective, but it won't damage the painted surface. Oh, that took some uh, some straightening out, did that. <laughs> right, I'm gonna just take out these small little dents and then I just need to blend this top bit and take that dent out. And then this quarter panel is totally done. These small dents seem very simple to repair compared to the rest of it that I fixed already. But I'm picking these hex tabs from Dent Reaper as they pull so hard and the glue that I'm using is the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu glue by Metal Medic. How they choose the names for these tools I have no idea. But I find this is the best all round glue for daily glue pull repairs in the UK. Using a, um, a lightweight sl uh, slide hammer on these small tabs, uh, it really does help. So if you use a, a larger slide hammer, it just snap off. So a lightweight uh, slide hammer and get some really decent pulls with it. Today, tonight, it's getting on a little bit now. There we go. If your tabs don't come off, or if the tabs don't come off, if you just warm up the uh, the metal either side, the panel, then it'll just go straight underneath the glue, warm it up, and it'll come off nice and uh, nice and easy in, in one bit as well. All the damage has been taken out now, all underneath this area here. So I just need to finish off blending this part, which was the deepest part, and then just finish off this little dent here. So uh, yeah, a lot of tapping, a lot of fine tuning. Uh, it shouldn't take too long to do, to be fair. It's just the odd ripple around here. But um, I can tap down the highs and uh, what it'll do. That's your highs, that's the dent. When you blend, you solid tap down the highs, pull out the lows until you get it like that.
Here I have a shallow low areas I need to lift up with my bar. You may be able to make out where the tip is by watching those lines flex. But I've added a marker in line with where I am so you can see it a little bit better. And finally, I just need to finish off the topmost part of this quarter panel, the C pillar. This isn't too bad to fix, it's mainly one outward crease and a slight low, which again is quite simple to rectify now that the damage underneath has been straightened out. There's no tension holding this metal and preventing it moving. Okay, I'm finally done with this this quarter panel. Took a couple of hours just to fine tune it and finish off um, blending it in. But let's have a look. Just take you off the stand. Put my inspection board on there. Go from the top. Work my way down on that top edge. Going down onto the bottom body line in line with the handle. None of this has been flattered or polished. We'll come down to the arch and then the dog leg. And then back round along the bottom of the bumper. And then I'll swap around. And from the other side, I'll let you have a look with the light first. So follow that bar all the way through, look. Um, the, the light bar, sorry. We follow those through. And put the inspection disc back on. I don't know if I, uh, I used this for the beginning. Probably won't be able to see much, just a lot of very distorted lines, but all those lines look uh, spot on. The quarter panel wasn't the only panel which was damaged in the vandalism. The rear doors on both sides were also damaged. This near side door had an obvious dent near the door handle, a mixture of soft dents around the main part of the door, and a sharp outward dent on the front caused by an inner brace protruding through the skin upon impact. This door took around two hours to finish off. Ooh, right, that is side B done. I'm warmed up, ready for side A. Oh, this is going to take a while to do, I think. Uh, I think I've got the easy side first. Okay, side A, here we go. So I've just wiped all the uh, the marks off so I can have a better look at it. Um, and I've just had a quick look inside with the torch just to see um, about access and stuff like that. And to be fair, the access is absolutely amazing. You can get in all around here, can get in through here, go through the grommet as well. So I can get to every part. I mean, this bit here, that's got a bit of sealer in there, so I can't get the bar in, but it's just like the other side. So my plan is, is, is to warm it up, get my hand in there a little bit and just pull this out and get that line straight again. It's not going to take a lot to straighten that, I don't think. Okay, and then the main, the main area is going to be around here and around the body line. That's going to give me some trouble, I think. So I'm going to be glue pulling uh, that line back in with whatever, uh, whatever comes to hand. And uh, this, all this stuff around here, that's just the same as the other side. Around this area here, I'm going to be using the fender pliers, I think, just to get in there and I'll put a block of wood in there and get a bar in. But yeah, everything's accessible and although it looks horrendous, I think I can make a good job out of this. So let's get cracking. No, let's get started. <laughs> Don't know why I keep saying let's get cracking, especially when I'm glue pulling. <sighs> Don't want to pull the paint off. <sighs> 
Here is one last look at the damage before I start the repair. The quality control disc is there to cast a reflection on the battered panel and those lines are everywhere. The fuel housing area doesn't look like fun either from this angle. To start off I'm heating the damaged area to wake up the panel and make it more malleable. Those areas around the fuel door are very tight and the paint is under so much strain so the heat is just there to make it more workable. Checking how far in the panel is with a straight edge along the body line, then gripping through this hole with my hands and giving this a few light but firm pulls. I keep checking with a straight edge until I'm happy. Bearing in mind it's just a guide as the panel has a natural outward bow in its undamaged form. Then back in with the cold glue by Glexo. I love this stuff. Okay, here we go. Literally lifting up hours worth of work in only a few pulls. Adjusting my reflection board and warming up the arch ready to get some hot glue tabs in there and start pulling it out. Get a crease tab on there, right on that body line. Actually no, I'm just going to go above first. And stick one on the body line as well. These crease tabs are from Black Plague, they're my absolute favourite and they also last forever. These pull amazingly well too. Team this up with a slide hammer or adjustable lifter and again I can lift so much out in just a short amount of time. I'm just roughing out the larger dents around the body line area, just seeing what comes out and what doesn't. Um, but up to now it's, uh, it's moving pretty well, quite impressed. Just a little bit of a time, I know I can get to the back of it but glue pulling is nice and easy. Another crease tab on there, lots of glue. Uh, right on that body line now, get another crease tab on there. And just adjust the mini lifter. Just a few crowns at the uh, the bottom here, at the top of the dog leg. Just going to knock those down just to release a bit of uh, pressure, a bit of tension. Okie dokie, a um, bit more glue pulling on here. Just going to go below the body line, uh, going to warm it up first, just to make the panel and the paint a little bit more uh, flexible. This dent is a bit tricky as it's dented above and below the body line. The first tab is just below the line and I'm adding a lifter to this, but I'm adjusting it enough to add pulling pressure to the tab. And then adding another tab above the line and using a lightweight slide hammer to pull the dent and the tab out. This is also known as a double action method and a bridge puller can also be used. This will ease tension lower down and help the damage above come out better. Okay, I've spent about 10 or 15 minutes just roughly glue pulling the, uh, the body line area up around the arch. But that's identified a few crowns that I need to tap down. So tapping these down again is going to release all the tension in the panel. Uh, I think it just actually went pop a minute ago as well uh, somewhere. I don't exactly know where, but it did go pop. So that's a good thing. So there's quite a large crown here. I'm going to knock that down and just any other crowns that are around the area I'm going to go and uh, address those too. Choosing my best crown killer knockdowns, the flat nose and the cherry cap, and my lovely green hammer. And getting all that heat into this tight crown. 
I can work this from top to bottom over and over again until the area has been lowered. I'm not after perfection at this stage because either side of this will be lightly pulled down with all the tapping, which I can adjust as I go along with more glue pulls, but the main thing is it will release all that important tension that I keep mentioning. Okay, so still cracking away with it, um, doing various areas around here. Uh, I've gone back onto the bodyline area on the arch, but I have noticed that the panel is still rolled in. So I'll just show you. Okay, so the panel should be kind of sat like that. Okay, and can you see where the bodyline is quite far in? If, if you can see that. So I need I need some kind of uh, glue tab that's going to help me pull that out. So here we are. Use the Kiko stuff. This is um, this is designed for archers. Um, just show you. There you go. You can see how it, it contours with the arch. So in addition to this, I'll need um, a put a, an attachment. Okay, and that slides on. Try and do this with one hand. It slides on like that. Can you see? Okay. And then we attach it to um, to a pulling device. And in this case, I'm going to be using sorry, going to be using the K-bar strong arm. That goes on to the panel like that, and then you lift the dent out like that. Okay. So I'm going to get. I'm going to get it set up on this uh, on this panel and show you, hopefully show you how it pulls the panel out. These crease tabs have a curve to them which suits the wheel arches and also cutouts on the rear which help the tab mould to the shape of damage. These tabs need plenty of glue applying, Camo or Collision or Kiko Flex Glue is the best for these, making sure you don't get dripped on by the molten glue because trust me, this hurts so wear gloves and then firmly applying the tab to the area you want to lift up. In my case, it's that body line. To be sure I'm pulling at the correct temperature, a laser thermometer is used and I'm aiming for 29 degrees C. Then I can attach the strong arm to the tab and adjust the foot, making sure it's firmly placed, ready for the controlled pull. Nice. Pulled it out a lot, did that. Best way to get these tabs off is just to soak them and then go on the edge like that and just give it a little little twist. It'll come off in a second. There we go. Ooh, horrible sound. Ta da! If you're enjoying this repair, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Okay, plenty of carefully placed small pushes to ease out the tricky low areas above and below this body line. I also used a bar to push through some of that bonding at the edge of the panel. And after a while it was getting to my hands, but I think that's because I need another coffee. Repeating the process of laying down those slight high areas, again with another knockdown, and this time it's slightly sharper for more precision. Above the bumper as well and a lot of glue pulling to ease up that panel and reshape it to the natural concave shape it used to have. What has felt like hours to me is seconds to you but it's looking a lot better. Okay so basically what I've done is I've just smoothed all this arch, just smoothed all the dents out. It's a little bit ripply still but it's a million times better. Whew hard work that was right I'll have a I'll uh, let you have a look so there you go so now I'm gonna be looking at this area here and just just around here so anything around the petrol flap there's quite a lot of work to be done there and that's quite tight is that I'm going to be using the fender pliers see if I can get them in there I should be able to and then just going to nibble away at that dent once that dent has come out then I can knock that crown down which is that ugly looking thing there and uh, yeah it's, uh, it's transformed a lot to be fair and I was very very worried about this quarter panel but 
yeah, there we go. Right, let's get on with it. Okay, I've got a few sets of fender pliers here. I've got the, uh, the version one, which is the panel edge pliers. Version two with the T head. And then the Mark III version three with the swivel head. If I can make it swivel. There you go, like that. I'm gonna try these ones first and then try the others if these don't work. I've gone with the edge pliers as the reach on these are short and they fit perfectly in the housing hole. I've also paired the pliers up with a soft cap screw tip bound with tether tape as this is my safest choice allowing me to use a lot of pushing pressure but without any concerns of splitting the paint like sharper tips could do attached to these pliers. And I definitely don't want that to happen at this stage of the repair. I'm carefully nibbling away trying to get the tip right into the edge where that recessed fold is. My viewing point is between the two feet on the pliers which can be awkward sometimes and that's why the other versions were made as they have wider and adjustable feet. These edge pliers are best for door edges but as you can see they also work with repairs like this too. Okay the damage has roughly been lifted up but I am struggling to make it any better until that high crease has been knocked down. So I'm getting straight into that using the mid-range knockdown. Not too sharp though, but enough to be accurate and effective. Too sharp a knockdown and it would really mess up this part or possibly scratch the painted surface as this crease is solid to move. Warming up the area would only soften up the paint, so I've got to be careful. Once the crease has been lowered and made better, more tension is eased around the area and I can carry on nibbling away at this dent. Those high spots will be tapped down and I'll repeat this process until the area is clean and levelled up. Moving on to the next dent and the same applies to this one, only we don't have the prominent creases so this repair is straightforward. This area took most of the force when it was impacted and it's moved at least a few inches inwards. Luckily most of this damage has popped out but there is still a few small dents remaining. So a few pulls with the glue and this front area is finished off and looking really nice. There's just one more area on the fuel surround to fix so I'm swapping direction of repair placing a few small crease tabs into the dent and then lifting up the bulk and then lifting up the rest with the edge pliers. There's a few small areas left to fix but I'm struggling with access because this fuel neck is in the way so I need to try and remove this or lower it down a little bit more. Half, halfway, it should be all right. So I was just checking the fuel level there because I need to disconnect the pipe from a fuel tank and I didn't want to be covered in diesel. This isn't a difficult job to do, just a jubilee clip and a few more 10 mil nuts Good. and I'm able to wiggle the pipe down enough to help me out. So I mentioned earlier about getting a block of wood in there for leverage and this was a great idea. The edge pliers are amazing at repairing dents but I need to get in there and lift up the panel over an area to align it with the floor of the body. So using the J bar with a screw tip and the block of wood this is an amazing effective setup to carry out this part of the repair. The dog leg on the offside panel is repaired the same as the other side. I can only use the glue pulling in this area as there's no access at all from the inside. I 
And for those of you that are confused why I'm talking about dog's legs, well it's pretty simple. It's because the arch to sill part of this panel is shaped like a dog's leg. Wise guy, huh? We're nearly there now with the repair and I am spending more time on the arch area. There's still a few dents that are not quite right and as you can see from the time lapse there's lots and lots of time spent fine tuning. That's because the tension has been released over the full panel and all the areas previously repaired will have slightly moved out of shape. So there's lots of retracing my steps to get that finish that I'm after. The fuel housing hole on this side was very much welcomed and it enabled me to use some small flat PDR bars to reach the bottommost parts of this arch. Without this hole I reckon I would have struggled to get some tools in. This bar is called a whale tail because the end is shaped like a whale's tail. This has been slid down into the tight gap and then I can rock the bar levering it off the inner arch and pushing the dent out from the painted side. It is a sharp tool so I need to be steady with this one and it's a very talky tool as well. Once I'm happy that I've sorted the small high areas with my knockdown and hammer, I can check this area with my QC board and give the panel a good old rub like a panel beater would. That is from my sanding down filler days, but it's highly effective at feeling large repairs like this for soft lows and ripples that the eyes might not see. The rear crowned area is less damaged than the other side was, but it's still very obvious and it needs to be sorted. Using the flat nose knockdown, I'll be able to lower this area in no time, and because it's a leather tip, it won't leave any impressions in the panel, making this one quick and smooth repair. A few tweaks of the bar from the inside and this area is done. And I'm onto the last area of repair on this quarter panel and it is the C pillar. Just a few high areas to knock down and using the fuel hole I can get a bar in this time instead of relying on the hot glue to finish this part off. Okay the quarter panel is finally done. I just need to give it a polish and try and get rid of a few of these scratches. Next what I need to do is fit this, so because I've disconnected the, the filler neck it'll help me fit this a lot easier, see if it fits around the edges, reconnect the filler neck and then all that's left to do is repair this fuel housing door and fit the car back up. There we go, it's all nice and secure now, fit in, all the clips are back on, just got to reconnect the pipe, so if we go underneath There we go, just got to put the pipe on, otherwise when it comes to fill it up it will go all over the floor. This fuel door had been twisted from the impact and most probably the part which took the boot. You can see that I'm struggling along with this small panel on the time lapse. The impact had twisted this small panel and these are very fiddly to repair because of the size. Okay, I've been glue pulling for a little bit and uh, it's getting there, but as it's open, it means I can push from the inside. So I'm going to use this tool, this is the tool stool, okay, basically it's, it's just a, a stand with a tip on the end, okay, but it's, it's kind of like having three hands, so I can hold this and I can put it in the light and I can just pull the petrol door down onto the tip and then I can lift up the dent. So there you go. Very simple but effective tool stool um, dent slayer, A1 tool, there you go. The tool stool helps me so much, giving me that third hand. 
I needed to hold the door with both hands and be able to apply pressure onto the tool, making sure the door was rotated whilst repairing it so I can see from all different directions and fix all the buckles and bring this damage up nice and evenly. Nice one, I've managed to save it. <laughs> right, let's have a look, see if this fits. This is the, uh, the final piece of the puzzle. Ready? Wow. There you go, what do you think to that? Yeah, you can't even tell it was ever there. There I mean, you go. Considering what it was like, yeah, it was a right mess. I mean, I've been in the game for 20, 27 years. Right, I've okay. seen loads of accident damage yeah. and stuff. And I've never seen PDR right. do anything like that before. You know, Good. it's usually a new panel or a bog or something. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, that's it. You look at something like that and you think, how the hell is that going to come out? Straight, you? Oh yeah, that took a couple of hours. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, have a good look. Is that well in that? It was, yeah, it was uh, a bit naughty, wasn't it? Yeah, really bad. Just a share about the scratches really, but it's uh, it's hardly anything. Really. Yeah. Well there, there was there was scratches here but they seem to have yeah, I've given the yeah, I've given the panel a polish, yeah. Yeah. And you have those creases down here as well, so I've done those for you. Brilliant. Looks great. Really does look okay. brilliant. Yeah. Excellent. Well All right, thank you very much. Thank you very Cheers, much. thank you. Cheers. <laughs> thank you for watching this video until the end. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed it. See you in the next one. Cheers.